Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and uh, today we're gonna do a little bit, kind of a filler video, but at the same time I think it's a kind of kind of neat idea. So today we're gonna do the demonstration, do a demonstration of just how much of a ridiculous difference a even a tiny little fan, not going particularly fast, can make to your VRM temperatures. Okay, so. Um, here is the tiny little fan. I, I think it's like 40 or 50 millimeters. We're, we're gonna throw it on the VRM of this here Asus Z390-A motherboard. Thank you patrons for funding the purchase of this thing. As you can see in the back, uh, on, in the here, right, where we're here, we are running 5.1 gigahertz. Um, CPU is not overheating. We're just running some Cinebench R20. It's not that hot. It's not that heavy. But the, the VRM temperature in the bio, uh, it, from the motherboard readout, which I didn't realize this board had a temperature readout, so it does have one. You just have to enable the Asus EC sensor monitoring. So anyway, it's reading out 106 degrees right now, so the VRM is pretty hot. If it goes above 110, I would consider that not great for long-term operation. Um, this thermometer, uh, well, this multimeter acting as a thermometer right now, has a K-type thermocouple that's jammed roughly in this area of the VRM heatsink. I'm not going to actually touch that because that's that's going to be really hot and it's going to be painful. Um, so anyway, as you can see, the temperatures right now are kind of awful. We're just you know sitting on an on a test bench. There's no active airflow. The room is relatively cool, but you know nonetheless, it, it's not like I'm trying my best for for the sake of cooling this motherboard. And we're, we're sitting around, you know, 98 degrees, like around 100 degrees PCB temperature, 108 degrees on what I assume, like the, the VRM readout that we have in hardware info, I assume is actually internal MOSFET temperature. Um, and actually while Cinebench is running, it actually just keeps getting uh, hotter and hotter. So um, yeah, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's getting pretty, pretty hot. Um, Anyway, the board will shut down if it gets too hot. Um, I think it happens at 125 degrees uh, EC temperature, but I did not really here to demonstrate the board shutting down from overheating. But the over temperature protection does work, so <laughs> there. Anyway, so there's our little fan, right? I I've put it in there, and now I'm just going to turn it on to like 3000 RPM. Because um, it's so small, it doesn't actually make that much noise. Um, it's also about $5, so it's 2,800. Yeah, okay, now it's around 3,000 RPM. And there's a bit of lag before the fan actually starts having an effect. Um, so right now we're at 110, 111, but you can already see the, the K-type thermocouple temperature is dropping, because um, obviously the K-type thermocouple is measuring more like the PCB and heatsink temperature rather than the internal MOSFET temperature, which is going to lag behind the heatsink temperature, because there's uh, thermal resistance between the internals of the MOSFETs and the actual heatsink. Um, yeah, so we have this tiny little fan. It's not going particularly fast. And our temperatures are dropping and dropping. For Cinebench, it should be able to bring us down to like 60 degrees PCB temperature, and I think it's like 90 MOSFET temperature. The thing is, if you shove airflow through the heatsinks, there actually there's actually going to be a bigger gap between like the PCB heatsink temperature versus the internal MOSFET temperature because um, the the heat is going to be getting transferred much faster out of the heatsink than it's transferring through the uh, like out of the MOSFETs into the heatsink, right? So. Anyway, but our temperatures are coming down nicely, right? We're, we're now down from 111 down to 103, and temperatures just keep on dropping. Um, the fan's not even maxed out. Okay, it actually climbed up to 3200 RPM, but a small fan like this doing 3000 RPM, in my opinion at least, is really not that loud. So, yeah, and now we're at 100 degrees. Which I would consider these temp like the current operating temperatures, which are still dropping. Right, I would actually consider this completely ac acceptable for for long term use because the MOSFETs can tolerate relatively high temperatures. Um, it's more the components around them that, like your capacitors, aren't really rated. Like they're rated for 105 degrees, but at that point their lifespan is measured in you know a couple thousand hours. And if you're going to be doing, let's say, you know, rendering constantly, um, which the 9900K isn't really a good fit for that these days anymore. But let's say you were doing that with the 9900K. Uh, yeah, you, you wouldn't really, like, you would want a little fan on your VRM like this, um, because it just ma makes such a massive difference to the temperatures, um, 
And you might be at this point like, okay, but how do I, you know, like Buildzoid, I don't have a, a horizontal test bench for my system, so how would, how, how do you attach the fan? Well, have, have you heard of zip ties? Because <laughs> um, if you have heard of zip ties, that, that should be pretty self-explanatory. You can get very creative with them to, to attach anything to anything. Um, right, so, and especially with a little fan like this, it doesn't weigh anything. You don't need it to be particularly, like, uh, rigid in its mounting. I guess it might rattle around if it's really loose, um, so that might be annoying, but, um, yeah, and we're just gonna let this run, run for a bit, because you can see the temperature just keeps coming down. I'm actually gonna max the fan out. It doesn't, it doesn't have a, ma a very high max RPM. It's like 30, okay, it's a little over 4,000 RPM max, uh, full speed, right? I, I still think it's pretty quiet. Um, anyway, the fan's like five bucks, so, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, I think it's like a fractal design 40 millimeter that I bought specifically, basically for cooling VRMs on motherboards like this, where it's just like the VRM is decent, but the heat sinks just like thermally, like it, it just can't keep up. So yeah, apply a little fan and, uh, there, you know, te just, the temperatures just keep coming down. And actually, why did hardware info disappear? There we go. Right. And then core temp. Cortem's clock readout is wrong for some reason. I'm not sure why that's happening. But yeah, now, now we're in like low 70s and I'll, I'll turn the fan down again because... The thing is, if the temperature doesn't start rising even at the lower RPM, then, you know, we know that it's still above the equilibrium temperature. So as long as the temperature's dropping, it's like, yeah, we can we can keep lowering the RPM until the temperature starts rising. So right now I've pulled it back down to 3,300-ish. Uh, Go. Okay, now it's like 3,100 RPM. I think at this point it'll stabilize, and now, now you can see that, you know, internal... The, the temperatures in the Asus EC soft, like the Asus EC sensor is reading just 84 degrees on the VRM. Our K-type thermocouple is measuring like 72 degrees on the on the PCB, and that's under the heatsink. So like the capacitors that are between the VRM and the, the CPU, um, they're going to be much cooler, right? Because that's where all of the airflow actually is going through. So those capacitors are now going to last for ages, basically, because I'd assume they're at like 50 degrees now. Um, at which point you're, you're talking like multiple tens of thousands of hours of lifespan. Like they're going to last for freaking ever. So yeah. Um, you know, li little fans make uh, huge differences to, to thermals. Also, if you're wondering how I have Cinebench just running on loop like that, um, you can go here, preferences, and then you can set a minimum test duration. And that's... That's how you get it to run forever. Because right now it's set to run for like 4,000 seconds, uh, 4, seconds, which is over an hour. So, yeah, we're, we're now at like 72 degrees and the temperature keeps coming down because, you know, like, airflow, like, hot air, like, a lot of people will go like, oh, but hot air rises. Yeah, but have you seen how slowly a hot air balloon rises? Right? So, that's why having a fan, even a tiny little, you know, 40 by 4, I think it's a 40 by 40 by, I think it's 10 millimeters tall or something, like, it's tiny little fan, right? Even having something like this tiny little fan makes such a massive difference to your VRM temperatures, because no airflow is just so much worse than, well, any airflow, really. So, I mean, I can crank down the RPM again. Oh, it'll turn off at that point. So, two and a half thousand RPM, 2,000 RPM at this point. Now the temperature finally might start climbing up again a bit. Oh no, no, it's it's still stable. <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's just like, so how would you attach it? Because um, I assume some, you know, some people might be like, yeah, okay, that's that's all very well and good, but um, even even if you say zip ties, like, how would I attach it with zip ties? So I'm just gonna put this out of the way, and actually I'm gonna shut down the system because I don't really want to like be zip tying things on a running system. It's shut down, right? Yeah, it's shut down. Anyway, so the thing is with the 
what, basically, since we're using an AIO um, here for the for the CPU cooling, my plan with the zip ties is to basically just zip tie the fan to the... Oh, right, I forgot that that's on a separate power supply. The fan's on a separate power supply, so... Anyway, um, my plan is to basically use the mounting hardware of the AIO, just loop a zip tie around that, then... Uh, Actually, at that point, we can like we could jam it in like right here. But if we wanted specifically in this location that I had previously, then uh, like so. And I like the the reason why I actually went for like this corner is one, it actually sits there on its own. But two, um, it sort of jams air into sort of around both sides of the AIO, right? Like th this way and this way. Um, obviously, with more priority on the actual V Core VRM side than than this side, though there is two phases of V Core VRM under this. I, well, it's one phase because Asus is too cheap to use doublers, um, <laughs> or higher phase count controllers. You know, I, either is an option. Neither is being used. Um, so, anyway, right. And if you have an air cooler, then this might actually no. If you have an air cooler, you can use the heat pipes or like what. The, the thing is, literally anything that, like, the zip tie won't fall off of will be fine, right? So, and I'm trying to hold the mic and do this at the same time, and this is not working, so... I don't have a way to attach the mic for this setup. I did not think this through. I really didn't think this through. Wait, if I sit on the, the mic holder... Oh no, it's still falling over. So, I'm gonna throw this one... Can, so we're going to bend the zip tie a bit so that we can actually get at it once it's through. Up, right, and there's our zip tie around the AIO mounting hardware. Right. So, now, what we're going to do, we're going to... Because my plan's not actually to go... Well, it doesn't really matter, because if we go over the bracket, it'll actually work just as well. So, there we go, right? And now we can just throw the fan on top of this, which, where is the fan? There. So, now you can just throw the fan on like that, right? And use another zip tie, and it'll stay there now. Right, you just throw on the next one like that, and ta-da! And that's one way to f mat, like zip tie a fan to a VRM. Obviously, if you want it to be more stable, you can use more zip ties than just one. Um, then I'd probably actually throw a zip tie around the 8-pin over here. Uh, right, but if you're in a case, then your 8-pin might not be coming in at this angle, but actually you'd still probably be able to, because it'll be like bending back, but you should still be able to attach attach the fan to it. Um, I'm going to turn off the multimeter at this point because we're not going to be powering this on right, but because you already saw how much of a difference the, 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 the fan makes. So yeah, you know, just two zip ties and you can attach it to your AIO like that. Um, <laughs> that's the, like, th this is the thing is like, you know, I, I, I well, this video is kind of like, it's really late because, but in some video I was like, look, just, just jam a small fan somewhere near the VRM and you'll be golden in terms of VRM temperatures. And I got a bunch of questions from people where it's like, but how do I attach a fan there? There's no, no like mounting holes in, for, for fans in that area. And it's just like zip ties, man. Like you probably have a bunch of them. They come with power supplies and though admittedly they're meant for cable management, not cooling upgrades, but yeah. Um, what's more of an adventure is like, I've not figured out how to zip tie fans to memory sticks. I would probably also just go off of the AIO mounting hardware again. Um, and then like, actually I'd probably, yeah, use a larger fan and then just have two, because right now we have one zip tie that sticks up and then one zip tie to actually secure the fan in place. For the AIO side of it, I would do the same thing, except I have two zip ties sticking up. So I'd have one sticking up here, one sticking up there throw the fan on, secure it with two, and yeah, the the issue is it might flop over that way, but then I guess you could just tie it down to the 24 pin at that point as well. Um, and then, you know, it's not going to go anywhere anymore. So, yeah, um, you know, zip ties. Zip ties and little fans. Fix your... Because the thing is, the Dash A is actually a relatively expensive Z390 board, isn't it? It's like one... Well, 
Nah, it's low end. <laughs> like most people will give me flack for this, but by my standards, this is a low end Z390 motherboard. Cause here's the thing, the cheapest Z390 motherboard you can buy is like $110 and they're terrible. So I would not consider those okay to use. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, there. Z zip tie a fan to, to the VRM like that. I mean, it's not actually zip tied to the VRM, it's zip tied to the AIO, but if you're using an AIO, you're gonna have mounting hardware that's somewhat similar to this. Um, right, and like here I'm going around the actual, like the Asetek hold down bracket, so I'm actually going over the, the connection, like the, the mounting plate, but if you have, uh, there's some AIOs where you won't really have so much empty space between like the, well, you, you might not have that available for whatever reason, then you can just go around under the, the mounting hardware, right? Like you can go around the actual rod that sticks up out of the motherboard that you mount the AIO to, so... Yeah, like, j you just get some zip ties, get creative with them. You, you should, maximum you should need is like six. Okay, so <laughs> it really, like, if you wanted to really secure that fan well, six, maybe eight zip ties if you're going to go for like a three-point mount. Yes, it's ugly, but actually, if you trim off the zip ties, the, the uh, most offensive thing might be that you have a fan just kind of loosely sitting in the VRM area, right? So, anyway, um... Yeah, you know, if you have a sub 200 Z390 motherboard and uh, you do actually plan to wail away at an overclocked 9900K with like multi-core workloads, zip ties in a little fan. Um, they can make a huge, huge difference to VRM temperatures. So yeah, anyway, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I do have a Patreon. There's a link to it down in the description below. It helps out immensely because it allows me to do things like buy this motherboard um, for testing as, as well as the fan. Um, <laughs> which, like, well, you know, a single, a single patron can fund that fan entirely or a single shirt purchase, um, which, uh, there, that's a great transition, isn't it? To the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters. And yes, I do actually like the, the reason I go with Teespring is if you buy one shirt from my Teespring store, I can actually pay for a fan like that. So, um, like the the it, the Teespring gives me a very large cut on on any merch sold. So um, yeah, if you don't want to use the Patreon, Teespring is great. Like it's not like I've had a few people suspect that it doesn't pay that well, but no, it pays great. That's why I use it. Um, so yeah, it's also really convenient to set up. That's that's the other reason why I use it. So yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.